Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi, welcome back. This will be for 2 Peter chapter 3. The, the heading reads, Latter-day scoffers deny the second coming, elements to melt at the coming of the Lord. Verse 1, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in which I stir, you, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that in the last days there shall come scoffers walking after their own lusts, denying the Lord Jesus Christ, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, and all things must continue as they are, and have continued as they are from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that of old the heavens and the earth standing in the water and out of the water were created by the word of of God. And by the word of God, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. In other words, the flood, the, uh, the flood actually occurred and completely covered the earth. That's being mentioned there. Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth which are now are kept in store by the same word, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition, of ungodly men. So, in other words, at the second coming, the Lord's uh, going to cause the entire earth to be burned. But concerning the coming of the Lord, beloved, I would not have you ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is So what he's telling us here is that a thousand years on, on earth is one day of God's. On the planet Kolob, we read that from the book of Abraham. Verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise and coming, as some men count slackness, but long-suffering, toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord is not delaying his coming, except to give men a chance to repent. The half hour of silence in heaven mentioned in Revelation 8 may mean that the judgments that should come upon men will be postponed for a period of 21 years to allow men the opportunity to repent before the second coming. However, in talking about the half hour of silence, Elder McConkie said that we do not know what that means. So we, we can speculate that it might mean a half an hour of God's time or a half an hour of our time, but the revelation has not been given as to actually what that means. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, to the wicked, but the saints will know of his coming. In the which the heavens shall shake, and the earth also shall tremble, and the mountains shall melt and pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall be filled with fervent heat. The earth also shall be filled, and the corruptible works which are therein shall be burned up. If then all these things shall be destroyed, what manner of persons ought ye to be in, in holy conduct and godliness, looking unto and preparing for the day of the coming of the Lord, wherein the corruptible things of the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the mountains shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, if we shall endure, we shall be kept according to his promise, and we look for a new heavens, we look for new heavens and a new earth, I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. And we look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him, or be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you the long suffering and waiting of our Lord for salvation, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they who are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know before the things which are coming, beware lest ye also being led away with the terror of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To, To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. In other words, the more sure word of prophecy, it's impossible to be saved in ignorance. Don't be discouraged. He's coming. So anyway, that's the end of the chapter, and that's the end of the epistle of Peter. And we'll see you next time. Bye.